All right, guys, it's zero dark 30, and we're spring turkey hunting. We got two decoys set up here. We just heard a gobble and a couple clucks off to the left, which is where we anticipated. It's just getting light. It's really fun. <laughs> Yeah, you got him. He's down. Good job, brother. I could have, I could have shot all three of them. <laughs> I could have got all three of them. They couldn't see me. I was wide in the open there. Yeah. Good deal. Successful hunt this morning. I turned the camera just in time to get you, uh, to get you on you film shooting him. Bit. Busted his ass. A little Jake, eating dinner. Damn it, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> they snuck up on by, behind us. I turned around, I, I seen all three of them. I, big loop around. I guess yep. they didn't want to go through all them thick briars. Right? When, I heard that, when I heard that one cluck right here, I looked over and all three of them were standing right there. I know. There right, guys. <laughs> Successful spring turkey hunt today. Beautiful morning. We had three of them standing right there. I don't know if y'all guys could see them on the, on the, uh, on the camera, but there was, I, if, if I could have got my gun up, I could have shot all three of them in one shot probably, but I was waiting on my brother to get his so yeah and he, we expect him to come over here to the decoy which is over there expect him to come over there and, uh, yeah it was no blind he didn't have no blind he was just exposed right there just sitting there looking at him So we got our little bird back to the house. Got him out here on the tailgate. So uh, Robert's going to show y'all how he cleans them. Hmm. <laughs> First, we got to get the beard and little little guy. But we put a little salt on that and preserve it.
goat. Put it clean. Nothing else did worth saving. Yeah, it ain't nothing else worth saving. You want that back or none of that stuff. Get a homer bite right there. Oh, that's tender, Lord. You know what they had in there. Alrighty, so that's step two. First we clean, killed it, then we cleaned it. Next time, or next thing we're gonna do is cook it. So just don't go nowhere. So that was a great time. We had a great successful turkey hunt. So welcome into my outdoor kitchen here. I'm gonna break out the Dutch oven today and show you another great 30 minute Dutch oven dish you can do with that wild turkey or even your tame turkey or chicken for that matter uh, at camp or anywhere else you're at. So stay tuned. So here's what you're gonna need to make today's dish. The first thing is gonna be, uh, I'm gonna use a number 10 or 10 inch lodge uh, Dutch oven. This is the shallow. Uh, deep will work just as well. I have a Miroquois here, carrots, celery, onions. Also have some fresh green peas from our garden. You can use green beans, use a variety of things. I got two cups of chicken stock, two tablespoons of dissolved cornstarch, and then I have our turkey that I've uh, taken off the bone. This is the leg and the thigh. Taking that off the bone and I've cut it down into very small pieces or small pieces like maybe half inch chunks. Okay, so uh, if you want to make this in 30 minutes, you're going to have to break that down. I also have that marinating and some moho marinade. Uh, if you want to skip that step, uh, go ahead. And also to save time today, for some time sake, we're going to use a pre prepared bread crust. These are from Publix. I've used them in the past and they work really good. Now, if you want to make it even faster, than making all this stuff here, you just buy these bags, mixed vegetables. Yeah, it's gonna be missing your celery, but I believe they do make these little bags in different brands. They already have your Miroquois, they already have whatever you want in them. This one has corn and, and green beans. That one would be awesome in this also, but you know, here at the back was gourmet. We have, uh, you know, grow a lot of this stuff. We grew these carrots, we grew these peas, we grew some onions. Um, we're growing a lot of stuff, so, uh, and obviously this turkey came from the woods. You just seen us uh, get it over there and clean it. So, again, as much stuff as I can use here that I've either grown uh, or helped to, to catch and clean, the better. Go ahead and we've given it about five minutes to preheat the oven. Okay, just get that all that cast iron all going up and I didn't mention this in the grease. It's gonna need a little olive oil. It's about a tablespoon. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and dump in the things that are gonna take the longest. And I've designed this into being pretty much a dump. Okay, we're gonna pretty much just dump everything in there. We're all gonna give these guys a little head start. All right, that lid back on. Just, those are two things. They're gonna take a little while, and just a couple minutes. I'm gonna put it in the celery. All right, just a couple minutes on those. Move the lid. Gonna give them a little. They're sauteing along really nicely now. I'm trying to start all these uh, again. If you're trying to do this 30 minute. Start all stuff out room temperature, and that's what I did. All right, so I got that going in there now. Go ahead and put in the celery. That's the uh, last part of our Miroquois. My peas have already been blanched since those were frozen from our garden, fresh frozen from our garden. So I'm gonna hang off on those. I'm gonna give the celery just a couple minute head start. All right, put the lid back on. 
give a few more minutes. Let's, uh, okay, two, three minutes. I don't want to burn anything that's in there. This oven's pretty hot right now. Keep that moving. Oh man, that smells awesome. Man, you can't beat a miracle. Right, just give it a quick stir. Some of those onions are already starting to become translucent. Alright, so now we're just going to go ahead and dump in our turkey. And I've drained most of the marinade, but not all of that mojo marinade out of there. Alright, so I did not mention the ingredients, but we're going to go ahead and season this. I'm going to use some of my Backwoods Gourmet Steak and Brisket Rub, which is also good. It's a good all-purpose seasoning. Salt, pepper, garlic, rosemary, uh, I think a little accent in there, onion powder. Try to leave you a link below. Show you how to make that from scratch yourself. All right, so that's that cold turkey's done. Took a little bit of our heat out of our pot. So let's go ahead and get that back on there. And temporarily, you can always add you a couple extra coals up on top after you put something cold in it like that. If you want to keep this thing going, uh, it's been about five minutes. Five, six minutes. Alright, let's go ahead and carefully pull that lid off. Everything's simmering along very nicely. Alright, in the meantime, while this has been simmering, oh god, that smells good. As this has been simmering, I've had over on the side over there, I've been warming up my chicken stock and actually put a little bit of rosemary in it also. So, if you want to cut down your time to do these kinds of things, if you're putting in any liquid like this, either water, stock, whatever you're doing, put it over on the side and get it hot. Um, whether that's the fire, whether that's your camp grill, whatever it happens to be, go ahead and get it going before. Just you know, what I'm trying to say is just don't dump the cold stuff into the hot pot if you're trying to save time. So while you're, I was waiting for that five minutes to, for the chicken to simmer, it only took me five minutes to get that chicken broth nice and warm so that it wouldn't take so much heat out of the Dutch oven. Yeah, I just pulled the lid off of it. It was up to a nice simmer. I'm going to go ahead and start gently adding cornstarch dissolved in cold water. Alright, I'm going to do this a little at a time because I don't want to over thicken this. And I want it to be a light gravy. So, and again, since it's not simmering, sometimes it won't show you how thick it's going to be right away. So let's get the lid back on and give it a few minutes and then we'll adjust. So we went back in and checked on our consistency and it's pretty nice. I want it to be kind of like a, maybe like a stew, thin stew at this point because we still have some other things we got to put in there. There's our green peas from the garden. Those were already blanched, remember? All right. Get those thoroughly incorporated. Then we're going to start with our crust. In the meantime, while we're getting that ready, let's put the pop lid back on. All right, so I'm going to take my pre-made pie crust and we're going to try to, let me see if I can find the right tool to do this, probably a fork would be the best. I want to start, I just cut this into about a three inch strip. Alright, and I'm going to poke it down in, I'm using a tablespoon here, which seems to be working okay. Tuck it down in the side there. Put 
get all the way down and around there. We got one more. So that was most of one of my crusts that I had from the pre-packaged deal. Poking it right down in on the side. Alright. Next thing we're we'll gonna do is put a top on it. Here's the other thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the remaining little piece of the crust that I had left going, the one crust I had left going from the side, and I'm gonna just break it up into small little bits. All right, and that's gonna help to thicken this even more. So let's get all of it in there. All right, and I'm gonna just take my spatch. I'm going to kind of tuck it down into the gravy. Just like that. Now we're not going to take a whole lot of care with this. This guy right here. But these come already just about the same size as the 10 inch Dutch oven. I'm basically just going to kind of lay them in there. Just like that. Alright. Since I don't really have a kitchen knife out here, I'm going to just take my lemon tool and put a couple holes in it. Just like that. Now we're going to take off the bottom, some of the bottom heat. We're going to calm that down a bit. We're going to keep that top heat on. And uh, we're going to have to watch to try to keep it down lower. Actually, let's take that. It's a little hot there. Make sure that you don't have any spots of your crust that are way up too high it'll just burn on you. Alright, let's get the top back on. I'm going to keep an eye on that, but I know for one thing right now, I want to go ahead and calm it down a bit. Even though these B&B have burned down a bit, I got my, still have my, my ones in reserve over here. I actually moved a few of those back under the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and move those back out, the ones that I've added, just to get that, make sure we got that good simmer and got our thickening going. And now I just wanted to go kind of more gentle. All right, full ring on the outside on the top and uh, adjust the bottom as needed. It's been about 10 minutes, folks. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so our crust is already puffing up, starting to turn brown a little bit. So what I want to start doing now is I want to start rotating my lid so we get a consistent brownness on our top there. And at this point, if you wanted to put some cheese or something like that on there, uh, brown that, that would be great. But we're not going to do that today. Now we're rotating that lid, and the one thing I decided to do, I did not mention this in the ingredients before, but I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just take a little melted butter, brush that over. Well, God, it looks good. I think that'll help it get a little better color. Keep it from burning. It is looking really awesome. Leave your comments below right now if you think that is looking awesome. So for this last uh, 10 minutes or so, and uh, that'd be Cabela of this cook, I took all the bottom heat off. I don't want it to get any drier because it is venting off through those holes. Should be done.
So let's go ahead and serve this up. Um, I'll tell you one thing, it smells freaking delicious. Okay. Go ahead and get me a good portion of the crust and the filling. Oh. Well, I can still smell a little bit of that marinade too from the turkey. Give it a little garnish. Just a little sliced scallions right from the garden there. Actually, I got these growing in the uh, containers. Let's give it a try. Man, that looks delicious. You want a bite, I know you do. If you do, leave a comment down right there in the comment section below. Go ahead, oh, steam it hot. Mm -mm. Mm. Wow. That is really awesome there, guys. I don't know how to make a wild turkey any better than that right there. Mm. Sorry, I just can't stop eating it. That is probably the best pot pie I've ever made right there. Mm. Wow. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's going to be right over here. And for a whole playlist of cast iron Dutch oven cook, it's going to be right up there. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on great content here at the Backwoods Gourmet channel. We'll see you next time.